You guys, hi, welcome back. I'm Renima Bora and today is a bit different. Oh gosh, I don't know how to say this, but finally, and I've been dreaming about this for too long, but we are finally kicking off my solo pod where I get to share, engage, and reflect with all of you upon topics that matter. Now, if you know me from my socials, especially Instagram, you know I'm not someone to shy away from expressing my opinions. I love talking about things, whatever is going on in my life. And your incredible suggestions has actually inspired me to start this platform, or may I say pod, which I have decided to call Shh. It's actually a cheeky play on the notion that we women are often supposed to keep our mouths shut. A challenge to the very notion that we should ever shush our voices. Why should we? Right? Now for the first episode of my solo pod, I thought or rather decided to start off with something very personal. Something that hits close to home for many of us. You know, over the years, especially for the last four years, I have been called many names. Not because... I decided to marry somebody who is 14 years older than me, but someone who also came from a wealthier background than I did. And I've been thinking a lot about how to talk about it, you know? Not because I owe anyone any explanation, but because if people's judgment can be screamed out so loudly, I think it's time for me to speak my truth, just as loudly. To give you some context, I grew up in a middle-class family back in Northeast India, Assam, for the first 15 years of my life. And I moved over to Bangalore at 16 to pursue my degree and master's in PUC and whatnot, and of course, to work here. But then at 31, I made a life choice that seemed to have given a lot of people the chance to label me my marriage with an older, wealthier guy. But let me take you all back to where this all began. To the time where after I had several relationships that didn't feel right to when I met Gotham. I was 31, he was 45. It still makes me blush. But anywho, I was 31, he was 45. And it wasn't the money that he offered. Truly, it was, it was that support, the respect, the sense of equality, and the love that he brought onto the table. And I realized these were qualities that I was looking for in the man that I wanted to be with. I think it's not just important, it's just the right time to actually look at what does a gold digger actually mean? I quote, it's someone that pursues relationships entirely for monetary benefits. There's no love, no respect, maybe no whatever, I don't know, but it's purely based on monetary benefits. That's who a gold digger is. Thank me later. And here is the honest truth. I have worked incredibly hard for 18 years of my life to build a career for myself and to be self-reliant to the point where I don't really need a man to depend on. I need one to love and nurture, but not necessarily to depend on for finance. Now, quite honestly, choosing to be with Gotham was purely based on love and alignment. It didn't matter how much money he had in his bank account. And I never actually asked him what he was worth or how many properties he had or how much money does he have in his bank account, how many loans he currently had. I didn't care. He seemed like a guy who was going to love and support me. He seemed like a guy who had a feministic attitude, you know, and he had immense respect for the fact that I came from a small town, I came from a middle class family, and I put in that hard work to get myself a master degree and simultaneously work in a, in a BPO or a call center and reach the position that I was at when I met him. I was earning a six figure. And I still remember this. When Gautam and I met for the first time, one of the things that he told me and it shook me was that I was the only working woman that he has dated in his life. All the other women that he has been with were completely dependent on him. I immensely felt a sense of pride, you know. My chest definitely from a boob size of 34 kind of went straight to 38 if you know what I mean. <laughs> that was the weirdest way of explaining how I felt so proud of myself. <laughs> but that's me. You know what's also funny? <laughs> In our dearest country, India, I feel like there's often a gap between what's traditional and what's actually correct for you, right? We all know how common it is in arranged marriages in India where parents look for a spouse or a partner who is financially stable. Have you ever come across any arranged marriages where the mom and dad are like, you don't have a job or you're not ambitious? No worries. My daughter, I offer my daughter's hand to you. No. The culture that we have literally teaches us that we, when we become older and we are successful in our own ways, we also are supposed to look for a partner who can provide us that financial security, right? That's what arranged marriages are all about. So now tell me, why is it that when a woman decides to choose this for herself, she faces so much criticism? I'm so confused. If my mom did it for me, I will have accolades, but I did it for myself. So what do I get? 
a gold digger label. Interesante. I'm bringing in my Spanish a little bit. Very interesting. And it's important to address this double standard, isn't it? Because I feel it affects so many of us who is trying to do the right things for ourselves, who is trying to stand up for your own self, who is saying, hey, I know what's best for me because I know myself the best. So double standards, hypocrisy, right there. Now, before I go any further, there is something really important that I want to address to all the young women who is watching this. It might look like my personal life turned around because I married Gotham, somebody who had money. And I know a lot of you who follow me on Instagram, even on YouTube for that matter, assumes that's what turned my life around. But that's not the truth. I didn't just happen upon this life. I worked hard to get this life. And I will tell you how. I spent 18 youthful years building a career, honing my skills and making a name for myself. It wasn't easy. I came to this new city at the age of 16 with just a 10 standard marks card. I came here figuring my own ways of how to make money and pay my education loan to complete my degree and my master's without being like a burden on my mom and my dad. And I'm very proud that, I don't know, 18, 20 years later, I stand here in front of all of you saying that I could do it. You know what I mean? I worked very hard for it, which is why I tell you again and again, don't think that my life turned around because I married Gotham. It wasn't. It turned around because I made myself the best version of me by working so hard on myself. At the age of 17, when my friends were drinking and partying, I was sleeping four hours a day, working 12 hour shift in call centers in the night and doing eight hours of college, a regular college. So there you go. The biggest investment is you. Invest in yourself. Make yourself that woman that successful men are going to seek, not the woman that is having to seek successful men. And trust me, because of that at 31, when I could finally see myself getting married, I had options to choose from. And it was my choice who was the best version or best partner for me. So I finally chose someone who wasn't just successful or ambitious, someone who I knew was right for me, who respected me, who supported me and treated me as an equal. And there was no bargain on that front. So remember, my dearest, youngest, beautiful, gorgeous girls out there, it's not about finding a sugar daddy, nor is it about treating marriage as a financial plan. It's about being strong and capable on your own term, making decisions and making choices that align with your personal choices and values. And finally, finding somebody who you know you will be happy with. And the reason I'm sharing such a personal aspect of my life is so that you all know that the path to happiness is definitely not through somebody else's bank balance or bank accounts. Build your own success and crave your own path. And you know, for whatever it's worth, for the next episode of Shh, I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons. Mainly the cons. All that glitters is not gold. And life is not a bed of roses. And I will tell you why in the next episode. So finally, to everyone out there feeling judged or misunderstood, please know that your life is yours and your decisions are yours to make. You know your truth. Don't let anyone label you. They don't have the right. And most importantly, they should not have that impact on you. Stand firm in who you are and what choices you have made. You know why? Because they are valid. They are valid because they are your feeling. And no one gets to tell you that it's invalid. You deserve to feel the way you want to feel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And remember, shh isn't about keeping quiet. It's about standing up for what's right, holding your head high, and not caring about what others say. See you in the next episode where we continue to break down myths and empower one another. Until then, please don't forget to show me some love. Like, subscribe, comment, and share, and tell me about your personal experiences so that we can make this place a better place for all of us to live. I love you all. Bye.